Sipping, you beautiful humans. <laughs> My name is Ariane Andrew. I'm Matt Dillon, and welcome to another piping hot episode of Sipping the Tea, where we are. Uh, Sip the tea, and our guest, Spill, spill the tea. tea. Yes. What's up, girl? What's happening? You know, it's a brand new decade, Chad. We're it here, really we're is. ready. Woo. I'm feeling very inspired today because our guest has a story that. The more I researched, it was so inspiring to me and shows that in any circumstance, you can just create the future that you want. And you know, he happens to be a New York Times bestseller too. Ryan Blair, what's up, brother? Uh, nice to meet thank you. Thank you for Pleasure. coming. Yeah, thank what is you. going on? Uh, this is what's going on, uh, people. <laughs> ba bam Right? Um, this is amazing. It is. So, you know, let's, we're just going to kick right on into this. Um, you know, you've have had so much success and people on this earth like strive to have a legacy like what you've built so like you know let's take us back from how everything started to where you're at now give us the journey and like the story of how you got there yeah well my story is a little little different um, I was first in the middle class my dad was an engineer and then he got addicted to drugs and my mother succumbed to alcoholism uh, for a period of time and so I got caught up in a gang and I left the middle class and went into poverty and so in poverty, I got to see really how people lived without money. In the middle class, you really don't get to see entrepreneurship, but in poverty, I got to see entrepreneurship. I got caught up in a gang. Uh, my sister's best friend was murdered in a drive-by shooting, and that's how I got forced into it. And next thing you know, I was in juvenile hall, and I was heading toward prison. And by the grace of God, a judge saw that I was a great writer. I'd actually written him a letter asking for leniency. And he said, you should be writing in, in uh, college, not in prison. So yeah, so I'll never forget that moment when that happened. And at that point in time, I thought to myself, maybe I should become a writer. And so that's when I started writing and started really trying to articulate, you know, who I was and, and how my soul felt and started writing from that point forward. And then, you know, further miracles that happened in my life that I would be exposed to a mentor at about 17 years old. My mother started dating a man who was a real estate entrepreneur and he taught me uh, about legal entrepreneurship. I was really good at illegal entrepreneurship and now all of a sudden I learned legal entrepreneurship and I was, you know, I was sold by becoming an entrepreneur basically. I feel like the entrepreneurship was in you. Yeah. You just needed the right outlet to, yeah. uh, to put it. I love that though. That's a, right? that's a quote, people. Yeah. Let's go the legal way. Right, yeah. but that's a story too, sheesh. Yeah, so well, at 17 years old, he started mentoring me and I started uh, working in his real estate firm and I was evicting people because I was tough and I would always, you know, uh, demand people leave the premise and uh, I was an enforcer in a gang so I could enforce for his real estate portfolio. Uh, but I, what I saw him do and the way I saw him conduct himself and the way I saw him operate, the way I saw him I saw it as the same as what the kids did in poverty, except for he didn't have to worry about going to jail or getting shot, you know, and he was able to live a life of, you know, filled with riches. And as a result of my exposure to the wealthy class, I made a decision that I was going to become wealthy and that I was unemployable, that I would be an entrepreneur for the rest of my life. And so as a result of that decision that I made, my altar call moment, really, when I was 17 years old and I made the commitment that I was going to change my life from that point forward, I've now been able to, you know, build pretty significant businesses. Businesses and, and have some great successes. Ooh. I mean, the impact that you've made through one aspect of releasing books yeah. and the reach that books have globally. Did you ever imagine, like, in that process when you were starting writing, that you would be reaching the world with no. your message? Like, take us when no. you were that kid that's like, you should be writing in college? No. Well, there was, I was in solitary confinement in juvenile hall, and uh, I had a, only had a Bible with me, and that's all I, they would give me in solitary, because uh, I was always getting in fights. And I was reading this, and I saw myself one day preaching, one day speaking. And so I knew that I was going to do something big. I didn't know how or what, uh, and I still don't have that exact, uh, you know, I'm, I'm uh, on my, entering my third decade as an entrepreneur. And every day, you know, I, I get to wake up every day with a contract renewed to do the work that I'm called to do. I, I really don't know where this future goes, but I have some peaks at it. I know kind of what it looks like. And it's, you know, it's, it's a great uh, thing to be of service and to be able to help people through my story and my experience. It's a fascinating perspective in the slant you take at that. Yeah. It's really fascinating. Yeah. And I think inspiring for a lot of people because it's like you don't need to have all the answers. Like when you exactly. just said you have a peak at it. Yeah. You just be, need to be willing to charge at it and do it. Yeah. And using, I think, adversity and things that you've gone through in your life to be like, you know what? People can easily fall back and say, man, you know, I've had X, Y, and Z happen, but taking that and turning around and be like, you know what? I'm gonna flip this around, show I can do better, and then give back. Yeah. 
And um, you know what I think is super amazing yeah. too is that you have the Blair Foundation. You yeah. know, it's crazy because I do feel like when a lot of people reach a certain amount of success, there's this negative connotation of like, oh, this person does X, Y, and Z, but you're the you're the complete opposite. And there's actually a lot of people that do do a lot of great stuff. So yeah. I want to talk about like the Blair Foundation yeah. and you know why you started then. Like you know you're doing so much to give back to the community. Yeah. When when my mentor and stepfather passed away, he left a lot of money, and when I saw that happen, I said to myself like, I want to spend this money while I'm alive. I don't want to leave my money, uh, you know, to people that aren't going to be great grateful for it or execute with it the same way I'd like to. So I started the foundation uh, as a vehicle for me to actually spend my money while I'm alive um, as opposed to leaving it. You know, you're going to leave your money to somebody, right? You don't take any of it with you. Um, and money is just energy. And that's the, mm -hmm. the mistake people make is they think money is this thing that defines you and it's not. It's given to you to put it to use. And the more you put it to use, the more you're able to receive back. And so I, my views on money uh, are very spiritual. And that's why I've been able to accumulate a fair amount of it. And I've been able to uh, utilize it as a resource to build you know, the, the businesses and, and do the things that I need to do to get my message out there. But it's not, it's not something that defines me. I mean, I make money, money doesn't make me. Mm. Yeah, and the other thing- I mean, I'm sorry, I'm gonna need yeah. you to say that I right like here that. in that camera. I, I make money, money doesn't make me. But the thing that you said about challenges, you know, I wanna give your audience a perspective on this. Your challenges and your adversities are what make you different. And the specific way that you had to endure that adversity, think of it as like a test. And if you get through the test, you're stronger because of it. And that strength is what's going to generate the successes in the future. So like I now look at adversity and I've, I've suffered great adversity, not just when I was a child, but over the past decade, I've lost at least seven friends and family members that were very important to me, including my mother and father. And those adversities rocked my core, right? It, it hit me in places I had no idea how to handle it. I was in grieving. And I was in severe pain when I lost my mother in particular because I had such a deep love for her. But now on the other side of that adversity two years later, you're like I'm, I'm kinder to people. I'm able to be there for friends and family when they lose their loved ones in ways that I never could before because I can feel their, you know, their pain and I can suffer with them and, and I can be there in ways that I wasn't able to before. I can have empathy in ways that I didn't have before. So I'm blessed to have received the difficulty of the loss of my mother, for example. It's not something that I've lost at all. It's in fact something that I've gained but because of that adversity I've gained strength and I've gained love and losing my father he was a very traumatic uh, figure I gained forgiveness because he was very abusive he's a violent man he walked out on the family when I was 13 I never saw him again but when he passed away last year I was able to really work through the traumas that he imposed on me and I was able to find forgiveness for him and forgiveness uh, for myself and for the way I reacted to him and so any adversity even the most difficult ones that you can think of they're all gifts and challenges if you perceive them as such and you take that challenge seriously and you grow from it and when you do that you elevate to new heights in life I agree with that I'm I mean, shook of what would the speaking on that that core right now what would be the one kickstarter to get somebody to analyze their deepest moments like whether it's a death or that yeah. to, how can they start on that journey to feel that enlightenment? Yeah, for, because I think for me, it's like you're talking a lot of things, and I was like, ooh. On more of a spiritual yeah. you know, level. Spiritual, but the reality of that. So how can people like tap into that spirituality? Yeah. Whether you believe in the universe, yes. you believe in God, yeah. it doesn't matter what you believe in. Uh, there's no coincidences. Mm -hmm. So these things that are happening to you are by design. And I've just had enough um, uh, designed experiences and adversities in my life that I can see a pattern. And when you see that pattern, you just say to yourself, okay, what am I supposed to do? And it's how you react to it that's really the challenge. So if you react in a way that, you know, is, is victimization mm -hmm. or you wallow in the pain of it for too long, you know, you have to feel the pain. So the first thing you have to ask yourself is what am I supposed to learn from this? And what is the, you know, what, what can I learn from this, right? And then really be looking to, to learn from each adversity. So if you have a curiosity, like I got hit with the difficulty, a business partnership failed or a lawsuit happened, right? What am I supposed to learn from this? How am I supposed to grow from this? When you learn and grow from it, the adversity generally goes away pretty quick. 
So it true. only stays with you if you wallow in it and if you feel like you're a victim and you walk around, you know, talking about these traumas and these problems that you've yes. had. But if, if you cleanse yourself of those traumas and those adversities and you see the adversity as a learning experience, you will elevate your consciousness and you'll elevate the consciousness of others around you. And so that's my message is like anything that you get hit with. I mean, I've been shot at and I realize now that, you know, these things that happened to me in my life have led me to here right now. And I would not be here with the spirit that I'm here with had I not suffered those adversities. I definitely agree with that yeah. because yeah. The, this is like such a big, massive aura. And I was like, but hearing him speak and hearing you speak, it's like I'm starting to go through things in my life and I'm like, oh, just chill out, man. No, but I mean, I even saw it on his Instagram, you know, like you you can tell like you just, I don't know, it's, I guess it's, it's in light and power of where you get to yes. when you've gone through so yes. many things. Because I always say too, like, things don't happen um, to me, they happen for me. Yeah. You know, everything in life is, like you said, there's no coincidence. So I think that that's just so amazing for you to, you know, reach that, to be able to reach that. Like most people never get to that part yeah. of their life because it's always poor me why me this is always happening to me mm -hmm. instead of being like you know what this is happening for a reason it's all about what can I learn and grow from this yeah. so it's so amazing that you're able to share that message and having such the impact that you do to be able to get that message across because yeah. a yeah. lot of people use their platform for things you know like you know talking about drugs and all this stuff and whatever you decide to do is that's your that's, your, that's your life but it's great when someone has a platform to be able to spread like such a positive message i think that that's that's like beyond amazing thank like, you i was going to get into spirituality later but you went ahead i was and like no i feel it, it, it was coming great. Yeah. it's like i didn't yeah. and it's so authentic i think that's why you're connecting with people because you've lived a life yeah and you're still living a life yeah but it's filled with things that are relatable yeah and i think there's a lot of people that that write books of this nature and it's like you know each their own everybody has their story but it just feels like your story is it's just a little bit closer to everybody's story yeah you well know? Uh, you know we all have negative and we all have positive yeah right yeah and the key in life is to try to get the negative out mm -hmm. and so you could be filled with more positive all right what's and, the formula how do we do yeah. it <laughs> uh well every day you got to meditate every day you okay. got to pray mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you know, I, I set my day up like I was up at 5 a.m., uh, 4 30 a.m. this morning uh, to be here, and I got in at least three hours of prayer and meditation prior to getting here. And so I invest deeply into my personal care and into things that, that provide the, the, you know, the energy that I need to do the work that I need to do. People just don't make that investment. I eat the right foods, I surround myself with the right people, and I take responsibility. Like if I'm feeling something negative, you know, I do the work to get it out of me. And I go to the root of it. You know, if I'm feeling something energetically, if I'm feeling something in my body, like if I have, you know, an injury, right? I ask myself, what is the root to this? Am I not taking care of myself? Am I pushing myself too hard in the gym? Am I not pushing myself hard enough, right? There's, okay. there's always a root to how you feel. And so if you can get to the root of that, you can, you know, you can do the work to re remove the negative. So you could just be filled with light and positivity. And it's a lot of work. So I spent two years working in the lab, so to speak, on this formula that is the new me that sits here with you today, that is able to share my positivity with others and share my wisdom with others in ways that's elevated. You know, I've always been sharing and, and trying to help, but yeah. now I'm able to do it in a much more impactful way. Man, it's that, working. It really is. I mean, and because we have you here, and you know, we, gosh, I wish we had like an hour. I was like, um, let's reset the clock yeah. because I wanna, this I could talk for it. Right? I'm getting. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Getting comfy on the couch. Yeah. But I do want to talk about some business stuff. I first want to talk about your book here with um, nothing to lose and everything to gain. Um, I want obviously people, you guys, go out there, go get the it's book. Kind of shiny. You know, uh, get it on Amazon, but. It, you know, we want people to read the book, but what are what would you say are three little nuggets that people could take away from this without giving too much? Uh, um, I'm an open book. You know, one I think that it really discusses the mindset and having a nothing to lose mindset. See, you know, when I was a, a young man, I was faced with people that had nothing to lose when they were in, when I was in jail or in gangs, and I saw the power in that mindset. And then in business, I decided to apply that mindset. It's like I have nothing to lose. If if you look at your life and realize that you know you really don't have anything to lose, right? If you take action, you're not going to fail. You're just going to get stronger. People are held back by their fear of failure, mm -hmm. fear of failure, which is what I talk about in the book. But I also talk about principles and practices, and you know, and my journey is not 
entrepreneur and how I've built and scaled companies that have done billions in sales. And, you know, and so I, I give all my wisdom away through my books. Um, but Nothing to Lose is the first one, and then Rock Bottom to Rockstar yeah. is the second. And I'm working on my third, which is called Alter Call Now. Aren't you glad you started wow. writing? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a lifelong journey. It's, it's truly. That, that's just one little nugget of everything about you, but yeah. if I, that would take me back to when you were like, you should be writing in college. Yeah. It's, that's crazy. But the power of writing, too. I yeah. Mean. I feel like it's very lethargic for yeah. you, too. Like, yeah. Well, the, you know, the word is one of the most powerful things, and using your voice is one of the most powerful things you can do. Mm -hmm. People don't exercise their voice. You need to exercise. All of us are artists. All of us have a desire to share, right? We just yeah. don't right. restrict. And so when we give and give and give and we don't actually take the time to receive is when we're depleted and we get burned out and we live in fear state. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we don't need to be in fear. In this day and age with the technology and the ability to start a business, there is no reason why everyone doesn't have a business going right now, why everyone isn't pursuing their artistic careers True. and doing the things. You know, you can get the information via the Internet. There's no reason now to not do the things that have been on your list of things to do for your whole life. Well, you can start right now. You can, yeah. but that's the hard thing, though, because we've been so programmed to the 9 to 5. Everything's a system, right, of how we've been programmed. So someone who is looking to try to make that step, because, you know, people feel like I'm too old or it's like I have a family. I just, you know, I don't have time. Like, I, you know, I have family members like I would love to do this, but there's just no way it's too late. Like, what would be one piece of advice that you would give to someone who wishes to, you know, share their value to the world, but just is like, I just can't. I don't have the money. It's just it's too late. What yeah. would be your advice? All, all of those things are excuses and so when you run a large organization you have to listen for excuses and my team will tell you you know and I hear an excuse I call them out on it we don't make excuses there is no excuse for not doing what your soul is called to do mm. and so if you feel like you're stuck if you feel like you're in a job that you hate if you feel like you're not um, expressing your artistic or creative talents then you need to make a change and you need to make that change the moment that you become aware of it and the change doesn't have to be dramatic it could be subtle you're gonna pick up a book you're gonna read a book about a subject of entrepreneurship there's plenty of books out there like mine you're gonna watch a documentary on the subject you're gonna uh, go to a seminar or invest in going to a conference or a gathering of people you know go to a meetup there's no excuse right if you feel I if you realize that you're called to do something that you're not doing you will become stagnant you'll become depressed you'll be filled with anxiety if you don't act on the things that you're called to do and that's why we have such a state of self-medication and I know that because I used to self-medicate a ton mm -hmm. until I actually started doing my soul's purpose and living my you know my 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 story and my journey and my experience and everything that I do man Woo! breathe it out everybody because right? this is the real deal here and I think I'm very blessed that you, you stepped in to share everything Thank with you. us today, honestly. Yeah. This is I mean, uh, working me up a lot. Yeah. I feel, you know, I feel like I, there's always a little bit more you can do. So uh, this is a nice synergy here. It is. You know, we're going to flip it, flip the script a okay. little bit. Um, I told you we're going to flip it. Um, it. We're going to do, I mean, this has been like beyond amazing in the value. Yes. And like everything that you've shared is I think for us personally too. Yeah. Were you listening girls? Because that applies <laughs> to your asses too. No, they're like, you. no, she's like, mommy, you do all the work for me. Um, we're going to yes. do a quick rapid fire. Bring okay. the rapids up? Put the rapid fire out with some quick, fun little questions. So these are quick. Sometimes people take a very long time now. So um, right. um, we're going to kick it off. If you were an animal, what would you be? An eagle. Oh, oh okay. Flyer, baby, fly. If you could have dinner with three people, dead or alive, who would they be? Jesus, Abraham Lincoln, and Winston Churchill. That is a it's, dinner. Ooh, and that was, and he was on point with that. Okay, um, what would you say is one of your weird quir uh, quirks? Ooh, weird quirks. I, I love to sing, and I sing really loud. Uh, like sounds almost like opera, and so uh, you know I, I sing so loud that everybody uh, uh, hears me doing it constantly. Oh, you can sing yeah. us out, yeah. bro. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's. I think this is a nice one to wrap it up. Yeah. Describe yourself in three words. Uh, <laughs> I am the greatest. 
Damn. Well, on, on, on that note, we're that's gonna have, how you do it. That's how you do it. We're going to have a little cheers Good morning. right here. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you yeah. so much cheersy. for bringing the energy. But wait, before, we're going to do a little cheers, oh, yeah. but we have to have you look right here in this camera and plug, you know, your social media, where everybody can find you at, the books, where they can buy the books, the whole nine. Okay. Awesome. We're going to give you this space right here. Awesome. Follow Real Ryan Blair on Instagram, Ryan Blair on Facebook. Um, or you can buy my books on Amazon yeah. under my name, Ryan Blair, Nothing to Lose, Everything to Gain, or Rock Bottom to Rockstar. God bless you guys. Those Ooh, titles. Right? Killer. The man with those words. You guys can follow me across the board at Ariane Andrew and this little nugget at Glitty Glit. You can follow me at Matt Dillon 1983 and uh, we'll leave the base to sleep. But uh, yes, yeah, you can find her somewhere. Until next time, guys. On Sipping the Tea, we'll catch you guys next Tuesday. Cheers. Cheers Thank Cheers. you so much Thank for that. You. Appreciate you. Ah. Yes. Yeah, you got the wrong number. Click.